Well, hello, welcome back. Today I'm breaking down this very easy, glam spring makeup look. This one can easily bring you into the summertime as well. And I also give you a warm lip option. If this like bright, cool toned pink isn't your vibe and you really prefer more warmth, I give you that option as well. But because your yeah, girl is cool toned and I'm really into the pinks and, and cool toned things right now, I wanted to do like a hot pink lip and this just screams spring to me. This is so shockingly wearable. I feel like because it is so simplistic, but so glam at the same time, you can wear this on a daily occasion, but you could also wear something like this to a wedding. I feel like this is also very simple that you can wear like a crazy patterned outfit or wear something very simple. You can wear a sweatshirt and sweatpants and sit around the house and you just feel a little bit more glam. So this is very easy to achieve. It's very minimal. You can actually customize this however you want. You can make it way less steps than I did today or cut some corners and make it your own. And you can also amp this up as well. So I'm gonna break down everything step by step, walk you through it and show you how to do it. I hope you enjoy, please subscribe and let's get started. Okay, so we are gonna start with the face. I started using this little combo recently and I am in love. <laughs> this is gonna sound funny. So this is like a nostalgic product for me, but I've never used it until recently. And I know that might sound crazy, but I've just seen it like used in makeup and just in the makeup world for years, ever since I started in the industry, I feel. It's the Embryolisse Multifunction Moisturizer. They changed the packaging of it, unfortunately, and I mean, it is beautiful, I like the packaging, but I think that the other packaging was just so nostalgic. I'll put a picture on the screen so you can see it, and you might be more familiar with it then if you see that, that packaging. But part of me wanting it was just because of the look and I know that sounds so silly, but that's kind of like, I don't know, I've always been that way with like packaging and makeup and stuff. Anyway, recently I wanted to just try it and it's so simple, it's nothing crazy. It's it's very, it's just like a classic moisturizer, but it has a little tack to it, so it's great as a primer. So a lot of like professional makeup artists would use this in their kit and I think that's why it just like, has always just been like a classic staple in makeup artistry. Anyway, it wasn't until like last week that I bought it, so we're gonna start using it now, so. I use it as like my morning moisturizer and it's great as a base under your makeup. My hair is like fourth day hair and I did kickboxing this morning so it was so greasy. And I was like, you know what? I just am not in the mood to do the whole shebang today. So we just slicked her back into a very sleek, slick back bun and I feel like my hair looks so dark when it's greasy and slicked back and it catches me off guard, especially because I'm about to go and get my hair done in like a month from now. And I plan on going basically all natural with my hair and that kind of freaks, ooh shit, I'm dropping this. Um, it kind of freaks me out when I do this cause I'm like, do I really want to do that? Because I'm like, you know what I mean? I don't know. I feel a little, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Next, I started you. Why can I not put this cap on like a normal person? Okay, there we go. Um, I started using this next product because I started using Differin. Um, I use it like two to three times a week at night and then in the morning I need an SPF. So I started using the Drunk Elephant one, love that. But I wanted something like a tinted moisturizer with a good SPF, with good ingredients. So my friend Abby, always talks about this and I've also seen this like all over TikTok and stuff. This is the Color Science SPF 50 and I have the shade medium and this always caught my attention because it goes on white and then as you blend it in the tint arrives and then I'm pretty sure, I could be incorrect, but I'm pretty sure that this like helps to adjust to your skin tone. I've used it three or four times already and I'm obsessed with it. I'm obsessed with it. So I shake it up and apparently the amount of sunscreen that you're supposed to use on your face is a stripe of sunscreen per each of these four fingers. That's a lot of sunscreen. So we're not gonna do that much, but um, this is also buildable. So here, I will show you. I'm gonna do two strips just so you can see what that does because technically you're supposed to do double that. So I'm gonna blend it together. Look at how beautiful this is. It gives such a beautiful sheen. Now, I have used this without putting moisturizer on, 
underneath and it dried me out a little bit. Um, part of that is because I'm doing the different right now. So my skin is just a lot drier than usual, but yeah, make sure you have some good moisturizer on underneath and look at that. I'm good for foundation. You know what I mean? I, it looks so good. Isn't that such a good product? And I love the way it smells. It smells kind of like an oatmeal cookie with a dash of cinnamon. I, mm, it smells so good. Um, I've never smelled anything like in a makeup product or like a sunscreen product that smells like that. I love it. I'm obsessed. And it gives just a beautiful finish, which to me, it kind of just gives like a no finish finish where it just looks like my skin. I'm obsessed. So that has been kind of just like my go-to routine uh, for every single day because I can just slap it on and then I'll run through my brows with something and put a little Vaseline on my lips and I'm good to go. And I feel like more polished than usual. Um, today, obviously we're gonna step it up a little bit, but that has just been like my base routine. So now we're gonna go into concealer. Um, I need water cause I'm parched. So I kind of want to try this new concealer that Too Faced sent over. It's the Born This Way Ethereal Light Illuminating Concealer. Actually, I don't know. Lately, when I go in with anything illuminating in here, I'm like, oh, with like a couple hours later, you know? Um, so maybe I won't do that. I do want to try this at some point. I'm just not in the mood to be a grease ball today. So, so two concealers that I wanna use, Tarte Shape Tape and Pat McGrath concealer. This looks like it's separating. This isn't old either, like this is pretty new. I, mm, I have questions, I'm still gonna use it. We're gonna do a little dabity dab, a little dabity swipe, bop, bop, low bop, low bop. And then I'm gonna take the pat and use that on the neck pieces because, yeah, okay. Then I'm gonna go in with my damp beauty blender, which I used the um, beauty blender cleanser and it just brought me back. So the beauty blender, I can't remember exactly when it came out, but it came out right before I started, or at least I, I knew about it, like right when I was getting into the makeup industry back in like 2011, 2012. The smell of the cleanser, it just brings me back to that time because once that came out and then once I started working at Sephora, which was I think 2012, maybe 2013, we would all wash everything with the Beauty Blender cleanser, all of our brushes, sponges, like everything. And so it just washing this today with that specifically just took me back all those years ago. It smells so good. Bah, bah, bah. Do the neck. And the reason I grabbed that pat concealer is it's just a touch darker than the Too Faced concealer. And that Too Faced concealer is just a little bit too light for me. So it looks good under the eyes cause we get that like brightening effect, but I don't want to brighten up my zit. So I'm gonna go with just a little bit more on my cheek here. I get a little bit of sensitivity from the different. And then on top of it, because I did kickboxing this morning, I just like stay red all day long when I do a, an intense workout like that. So I have never been more red in my life than I was today. I, I live a full 30 minutes away from the gym. And when I got home, I was still as pink as this beauty blender. And I was like, okay. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm okay. So now what? Um, I'm gonna go with some cream bronzer. I haven't used this in a minute. This is the e.l.f. Putty Bronzer. And I think, what color? I should know these by now. This is the color tan lines. Um, look at it like this. It's a good cool toned light bronzer. I do not have a tan on right now, which actually I, I need to put one on because sometimes like, I don't know if you guys have seen these TikToks where it's like everything going wrong in your life. And it's like, is it that? Or do you just need a tan? <laughs> and I'm like, maybe that's what I need to do. I think I just need to put on a tan. That's the other thing is like, I wonder if my hair won't feel so dark if I just put on a tan. I don't know. Oh, this is such a beautiful color. It's so good. I can tend to, which you're gonna be like, yeah, we know. I can tend to go overboard with my bronzer and my contour. I just love it. I'm never gonna stop, but when I find a good color that's like very natural for like a more fair complexion, it is just beautiful. And those are really hard to find. Also, do you see this mark on my hand? Obviously I have this from kickboxing. I think this is from kickboxing too. I think this is from my wraps, but I don't know. Like it just appeared. 
and I, it doesn't hurt at all. It doesn't itch. It's just there. And I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Oh, it does, does that hurt? Maybe it's a bruise. Oh, maybe it is a bruise. I, but what? I don't know. Never had a mark like that before. And it has been there for like four days. I'm gonna go up on the forehead. I will blend that into my hairline better. I'm just like not trying to mess it up yet. <laughs> We're gonna go crazy on the jawline. By the way, I'm using a 157 brush from Smith. This is my favorite because it's kind of like a wedge shape. So it's very stiff, but it has that great angle so that you can get it in all the right spots. This forehead's looking a little crazy. I don't know what's going on. It like looks dirty, but like in, in person it looks fine. And then I look on the viewfinder and it looks like dirty. Cool. Cool. Exactly what I was going for. So I am going to use a powder blush as well, but I wanted to try these first. And okay, something's in my eye. Um, these were sent over from Nude Sticks. We have the Nude Sticks Hydropeptide. Oh, <laughs> these are lip butters. These are not blushes. <laughs> Never mind. Um, okay, skip that. Um, next, <laughs> I'm gonna powder my face. Where's my, there it is. Um, I'm gonna go to the Laura Mercier powder and I'm gonna use a little powder poof. Get up here and then use the lid to like really get it in there and then set under the eyes. This is where I'm seeing the aging happening is right in between my brows. So we gotta powder that. Helps so that it doesn't crease as much. I mean, it's going to crease. <laughs> it will, it just kind of helps. Do you ever just get like random, like so random flashbacks? Like this is gonna be like one of the most random things I ever say, but I was just sitting here doing that and I just started thinking about how when I was in second grade, we moved to a different town and I went to a brand new school only for that year. And for whatever reason, I just flashed back to me in the lunchroom, in the lunch line. So random, like nothing brought that on. That's so weird. Do you ever do that? Cause like, I'll get that sometimes where I'll just like randomly remember like a random ass memory that I haven't thought of since it happened. So weird. I'm gonna go into the Estee Lauder Bronze Goddess Bronzer. This is one of my favorites. Um, I love this because it goes a lot more red toned. So I feel like it looks really natural on my skin. Um, so I'm gonna use this Charlotte Tilbury bronzer brush and apply this on the face. I like this brush too because it's small but fluffy. So it gets exactly where I need it to go without going overboard, but it's not too precise to where you're gonna have to like be too light, like too light handed with it or anything. It just, it's that's the perfect bronzer brush. I feel like that kind of helped with my forehead a little bit. I don't know, my forehead was like being weird. I feel like it is a little weird still, I don't know. And of course we have to contour. I'm gonna use my Smith 112 brush and this Studio Fix Sculpt Shape and Contour Palette from MAC. I have been just loving this. It's so nice to have on hand. I do feel like the quality is not as good as when you can get them individually. And unfortunately, they've been sold out of the individual products of these for at least a year or two, at, at least two years. It's still good, but not as good as it could be. So um, this is Bone Beige from MAC. I always forget. I think taupe and sculpt, sculpt and taupe, I don't know. But I'm gonna start with Bone Beige and just start contouring. I like to pull back on my brush so I can just chill a little bit. Cause I will, I will if I want to, you know? The uh, closer you hold your brush to the bristles, the more intense it will be. So you know I would do that. Um, but I'm trying to like, you know, chill it out. So I'm pulling back. And then I'm gonna do the nose contour. This is a random brush, but I love it for this. It's the Ruffer 32 brush. This also has like that wedge shape and I don't know what I like about wedge shapes and contouring, but it works and I like it. Oh, so we're, we're going for it, huh? 
I didn't really mean to go so intense, but, or did I? Also, when you're doing your nose contour, which I feel like nose contour isn't as popular as it once was, but I still go crazy with it. If you're doing a nose contour and you want it to be snatched, don't be afraid to blend towards the bridge of the nose. So I feel like it's, and, and obviously you wanna blend it out just a little bit, but if you blend it too far down, that will actually have the opposite effect and widen the nose. So don't be afraid to like, if I'm gonna blend this side, don't be afraid to like push it this way because you can go in and brighten up the center of that nose, but it'd be better to blend it this way then down because then you're just bringing that shadow out which gives the illusion that your nose is wider than it is so just keep that in mind and give it a try and if it starts to get a little mucky just remember you can always go in and clean it up but i feel like this way it just kind of brings it in oh, it's just easier in my opinion okay da, 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 da. another random brush this is another angled dense brush this is the 124 from smith wait i already put the product on so sorry it's like loaded but um another random brush they have very unique brushes um but i like this mainly for this step which is just cleaning up my contour so i'm gonna bring it right on the edge of my nose and i'm using the laura mercier powder do this side make sure that's more straight perfect and then I do the center. Now, because it didn't get fully covered covered with bronzer on the center or like the bridge of the nose, I can just take this down the center and that's gonna brighten it enough for me. But you can go in with a concealer or something like that, something a little bit more intense if you feel like it got completely covered or something um, that can help you like re-emphasize that area. But this usually ends up being just enough for me. So I'm gonna let that sit while I clean up under my cheeks. I'm gonna blend this away. All it did is just kind of clean it up, brighten it up, and it looks good. And then we can do the nose. I start with the sides. I'm going in with what? Ugh. I'm going in with whatever's left over on this bronzer brush, just to pat this out so that it's not like, you know, I'm done though. Just helps it look very natural. Hmm, I like it. Okay. For, I'm gonna do highlighter first because I like when that kind of just peeks out behind the blush. I think it looks really natural that way. So for, <laughs> I'm gonna use another one. I'm not gonna pick that up. Um, for my highlighter today, I'm gonna be using the Benefit Cookie Highlighter. I haven't used this in so long and it's such a beautiful, like icy kind of a color. The first time I tried this was when I went on a trip with them right at the beginning of 2020. I don't know if it was new then or if I just hadn't seen it before, but I really, I really loved it because I feel like it's hard to find a really good cool toned highlighter. A lot of times they go very warm and this is just a nice neutral icy color. It's very intense so you only need a teeny tiny bit. I'm gonna put it right, right on the highlights. So if you, if you put the most product right at the very tippity top of your cheekbone, like right here and keep it there, once the majority of the product is off of your brush, then you can kind of disperse it a little bit and then it will give you more of that like highlighty glow. So just a little bit, keep it focused right, well, you need a little more than that. Keep it focused right here and then you can blend that out. I'm gonna use my finger and do the center of the nose. Blend. Beautiful. You can always go in with your sponge too and just kind of go over things just to make it a little bit more seamless if you need. I'm gonna go to the Tarte Doll Face Blush. I haven't used this in so long. Hopefully they still have it. I find that like a lot of times I'll be like, oh, I'm gonna use this. I'm so excited about it. And then I look to go link it in my video and it's gone and it's been discontinued. discontinued. So hopefully it's not discontinued, but this is Doll Face. It's a nice bright, fun pink blush, perfect for spring. Um, I'm gonna use my MAC 168 brush and lightly pop this on my cheeks. It's such a beautiful like bubblegum pink color. I think that's gotten pretty popular actually. Ooh, that's so pretty. Honestly, like I've been kind of digging like a no mascara look, like just doing some, just a little something something and then brows 
little lip, but just like leaving my eyes blank. I don't know, I just feel like it looks really fresh. And I feel like this blush with a look like that would be so pretty. I'm gonna have to leave this out to use more this spring. Then you can always go back in with the brush that you used for your highlighter and just kind of go over that as well. Just so you have a nice seamless blend on the cheek. Okay, I think we can move on to the eyes. Okay, so for my brows, I have been using the L'Oreal Brow Stylist Definer, which I love, but I feel like maybe I need to get a lighter, a lighter color because the last two days specifically, I used it and I went, I think I just went a little overboard and I was like, between that and my greasy hair, which makes me look like I have really dark hair, I'm like, just not feeling myself. Um, so I'm gonna use my Precisely My Brow Pencil from Benefit in the shade number three, which has always been just like my shade and see if this kind of just helps me feel myself. This is what that looks like. I love a very teeny tiny pencil. Um, but as far as quality goes, honestly, like the drugstore ones are like just as good. I mean, I love Benefit. They make great products. Um, but it's just the drugstore has gotten really good, especially with brow products. So I'm actually gonna sit back pretty far. If I do my brows too close to my mirror, they look insane. And I swear, anytime I do them in here, they look insane. I'm, I'm like tempted to just go in my bathroom and do my brows real quick because it takes half the time and they look twice as good. But I'm gonna try to do it here. <laughs> That's the best I've done my brows in this room in forever. I'm gonna prime my eyes with Painterly Paint Pot, my favorite, my tried and true, and I'm just gonna pick it up with my finger because they're so short, they just keep cracking. They'll be like starting to grow out and then I'll have like a slit like goes, it goes like horizontal and it's just like, I have to clip it because it's it, it like gives me the chills. Like I don't get why they're breaking, I mean, I say that as I'm like not taking care of my nails. Um, but like I haven't like touched my cuticles. I don't do the cuticle oil. Like I know that would help. I watched one of my like old makeup tutorials uh, from a couple years ago and I used this palette and I was like, I forgot that this existed. This is the Artist Couture Supreme Nudes Palette. And I wanted to whip it out today, even though it's gonna be such a simple look. Um, I want this to be something like super, super easy. And I want the focus to be on the lips. But I used to use this all the time and it just gives like these neutral colors are so gorgeous. So yeah, we're gonna start here with this color. My focus has been a little difficult. Um, I'm gonna use this color here as the beginning base shade. This is called Stripped. My fluffy brush. This is a rougher number 16 brush. Pick up Stripped and I'm gonna put this right in the socket. Right in the socket of the eye. Remember, the closer you hold your hand to your bristles, the more intense the color will go on. So I highly suggest really pulling back to like the middle to the end so that it goes on lighter because you never know. If you go in with a heavy hand, it's gonna be really difficult to get rid of that where if you go in with a light hand, you can always build up the color and make it more intense. So it's a lot easier to start Back here, add just a little bit at a time and then you can build it up. Your eyeballs, you can look up to the ceiling and just wiggle this around and it will just blend it for you. You don't even have to think about it and it won't make you poke your eye out. You can blink as much as you need. I'm gonna grab a nudist, this color over here, same brush, lay it on the lid. I'm gonna go back into stripped too and lay that. I'm putting it on the flat part of the brush. So instead of just the tip of it, I'm doing the whole flat side and just laying that on the lid. So you just have this like very smooth wash of color on the eye. I'm actually gonna mix these two shades together. We have Transcend, which is a lot warmer, and then Silhouette, which is more cool toned. Because they're so opposite, I wanna mix them together and deepen up the outer corner. Just because I want this look to stay very neutral. I don't wanna to go too warm or too cool. I want it right there in the middle. If you want one or the other, you don't have to mix these two together. Um, also, by the way, you don't have to use any of the products that I'm showing you in this video. You can use whatever you have at home, anything that looks remotely similar, and you can create an identical look. You're not gonna be able to tell that we use different things, so keep that in mind. Um, 
But yeah, you can also customize this depending on what you're going for. Like if you have more warmth in your skin or you're wearing more of like a warm toned outfit or something, like stick to the warm shades. Or if you like more cool tones, you want to go that route or try something different, like you can just do cools. Just keep that in mind. You can really, really customize this look, even though it is something so incredibly simple. Okay. Also, <laughs> I did just like add some depth to the outer corners here. You can even skip that too. You could just do a wash of color on the lid or nothing on your lids actually. That would be beautiful too. So you can really play around with it depending on like your skill level or what you're in the mood for. You can go more dramatic, totally up to you. I am actually, I think gonna stop right about here because I'm happy with the amount of color that's on my eyes for the look that I'm wanting to do. Again, I want the lips to be the main focus. I'm gonna highlight with that cookie highlighter that we used on our face. Um, let me grab a small brush. This is a, it's a rougher day today. This is a rougher 28 brush. And oh, I'm gonna pick that up in here and really pop it on the inner corners. When I was working at Bare Minerals, my friend Kim and I would always say inner kerner. So <laughs> instead of inner corner, so now I'm like every time I do my makeup, I'm like inner kerner. If you need to, you can go over that with your fluffy brush. I think we are good to go. So much effort for such an effortless look. I'm going to curl my eyelashes. I just started using the Olaplex Lash Serum and Brow Serum. Literally just started using it yesterday. It's gonna take about like three months to see any results, so I will keep you posted. I'm eager, I'm actually, I, I have a feeling that no matter what, the lashes will work. I've used Lash Serum in the past from like other brands and they always work very well. Um, just as long as you're consistent and actually like do it. Uh, but I'm so curious about the brow serum, I, we will see what happens. These suckers have not, like I never tweeze my eyebrows because they are just so sparse and maybe even not necessarily, yeah, they're sparse, but they're also very like light in color. So I feel like sometimes like there are hairs there that you just like really cannot even see. So when I tint my brows, they look great, but like this inner part of my brow, like hairs just do not grow there. So I'm just, I'm curious if there isn't a hair there to grow. I feel like if there was, it would have grown by now. So I don't know, we'll see what happens with this brow serum. I'm so curious. Um, I'm gonna do some mascara. You can use any mascara, but I have been using this YSL mascara. One thing that I've learned from doing videos is, I mean, obviously I like to try out a lot of stuff, right? but you can't try out a lot of mascara because you will waste them. I just threw out like five tubes of mascara because of trying them and then they just sit there and then they dry up. So I'm sticking to one mascara at a time and it kills me because right now I'm gonna put on false lashes and I don't wanna use a bougie YSL mascara when I'm gonna be using false lashes, but I'm not gonna let one go to waste. You know what I mean? Because it will if I open up a drugstore one or I don't even have one, but if I had a drugstore mascara, you know what I mean? I wouldn't wanna like waste stuff. Oh my gosh, so I am gonna do false lashes, but this with just mascara would be so beautiful. Just a little bit. Again, I can tend to go crazy with lower lash mascara and lately it has just not been the vibe, which is crazy because I used to like load it and anytime I do that on accident, I'm like, like already that size a little too much, but I'm just, I'm just gonna leave it. So I'm applying the Ardell 422 lashes. I like to put them on the center of the eye first, then do the inner corner and then the outer corner. And then I feel like it's a lot easier to adjust from there. As long as you have that center point, then it's easy to do the inner point. And if you have the inner point, then you can move around the outer point if you need to. Then grab them and squeeze them together with your natural lashes and they will look so natural. I'll link my video on how to apply false lashes right up above in the info card. Also make sure you have a handheld mirror that you can like look down into. That way you're not like poking at your eye and you can actually see what you're working on. And then when you squeeze them together, you wanna come from the side, not like directly at your eye. So I did the outer part and squeezed it and I'm doing the inner part and squeezing it and I'm coming sideways. I have this rogue hair that just wants to stick up. 
I knew this was gonna happen, so I grabbed my dart stick. This is the R & Co dart stick. This is basically just like a putty pomade, and you can just, let's see, if, I don't know if you can see it, but it just slicks it. I am ready for the lips. So I wanna show you two separate lip options because the look itself is just like a glam, bold, simple look and depending on whatever you're wearing or whatever colors you think look best on you like i know color analysis is so popular right now and like i've talked your ear off about it but whether you're like trying to follow that or you just prefer certain colors over uh, over the other i want to show you that you can kind of have like the same look but it will look different depending on what lip color you choose this formula is just my favorite and i feel like his selection of colors for this lip line is just perfection and these are the Patrick Ta lipsticks. I have the hot pink one and the bright orange one. And like, watch, depending on what you choose, it totally changes the look. So I'm gonna start with the orange actually, because the pink is gonna be my favorite. Um, and I wanna do the orange first. So you can also see a warm option. So I'm gonna start with the Habanero lip pencil from MAC. And I'm gonna line and overline my lips with this. Hopefully they still freaking have this. And when I'm lining my lips, I'm using my pinky as a balance point. That'll help me be way more precise. I'm gonna go into She's Not From Here, which is like this bright orangey coral color. And pop that on the lips, oh, wow. I can't remember the last time I did like an orange. So this is absolutely out of my comfort zone just cause I normally don't do like a straight up orange. But if you want like a warm version of this look, this is what that would look like. I would, the only thing I would do different with the look with a lip like this is go in with more of like a, like a peachy coral kind of a blush instead of like the bright bubble gum, bubble gum pink that we did. The orange really do make my eyes pop. Now imagine this on someone with more warmth in their skin, um, more of a tan even. I mean, you don't need a tan to wear this, but you know what I mean. You get the vibes, you get the vibes. So I'm gonna go remove this and then I will show you the pink option. Okay, so. Now for the pink. I have a couple of different lip liner options. What do I want to use? You know, I have the one that goes with it from Patrick Ta. I just am not a fan of these, but I think that this is what's gonna work the best. Um, so this is the matching lip liner. It's just, it has like this angle to it. So it makes like applying it so difficult. And then it's push to make it like go up. And then once it's up, it's up. So I don't know, I just don't like it. Um, but that's what I'm gonna use today. So I'm gonna line and overline my lips with this. Now I'm gonna go into She's Hard to Get. This is like this bright hot pink color. And I'll apply that on the lips. I love this so much more. I think it just flatters my features a little bit, bit better. I think it also helps that I'm, I am wearing silver today and I did that pinky blush. So it's all just like going together where if you wanted to do the warm lip, it would all match a little bit better if you had a warmer blush and gold jewelry on. I'm just gonna finish everything off with the Morphe setting spray and my fan. Oh, I just needed that. I might do that again. Face is just a, a little bit dry today. This is one of my favorite looks to do because it doesn't take a lot of effort. It's very minimal and you can actually, really actually tone down a lot of the steps, but it really packs a punch because of the lashes and because of the lip. It's so bold and so glam. You could wear this literally anywhere, I feel. You could even wear something, and this is dramatic, but like you could even wear something like this to the beach because it is so minimal. Um, we didn't even wear foundation today. Yeah, your lip's gonna get a little messed up, but you know what I mean. Like you could wear this to a wedding. You could wear this on the daily. It's just so easy. And you can even grab like 
just your everyday lip gloss or lip liner or lip balm or whatever, keep it in your bag. And if you're over wearing this like bright lip, you can just remove it and pop on something sip simple. Your lips will be a little stained underneath, keep that in mind. But I have done that before. I think for Valentine's Day, I wore this lip combo and then I was over it because I ate and like it still was on, but like you know that feeling of when you have on like a bright bold lip and you eat food, I just feel like I don't know, I can't do it. Um, so I removed it and I put on a nude lip afterwards. So just keep that in mind. But that is everything for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed following along. I really wanted to do just like a classic makeup tutorial and do this look because I feel like it's been a while since I've just kind of like brought it back to the basics and done just like a simple, very simple but glam look like this. So I hope you enjoyed. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and I will see you very soon. Bye.